Terrence Howard is the worst kind of stupid person. A stupid person that has convinced himself that they're not only smart, but a genius. I had the, the grand unified field equation at, at seven, eight. I've never in my life seen someone spout off so much easily fact-checkable bullshit for as long as he has with as much confidence as he has. So if you can mm. prove that an action times an action equals a reaction, which science proves, then one times one must equal more than one. Because I'm sure you've seen a lot of them recently with the Joe Rogan interviews going as viral as they have, but Terrence Tesseract Howard has been pretending to be the god of math and science for about a decade now. Diamond gets stronger at 2,000 degrees Celsius. So we're do we doped them with boron and we're creating these chips that will speed up the computer a and thousand times faster. And you learned all of this from the Rihanna video. That is incredible. <laughs> I've spent the last month or so researching why he chooses to be like this. And I found that his story is a lot darker than I could have imagined. So let's get started. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations. Not only is Terrence Howard that guy that says right. on TV, but he is also a self-proclaimed mathematician, physicist, and overall science god. A science god so powerful that he has single-handedly reinvented all things math, physics, and geometry, but also has the ability to create planets out of nothing but numerical sentences and vortices. The core of Terryology is the fact that one times one equals two, because in Terry's own words, how is it that multiplication, if it means to make more and increase in number, how is one times one equaling one part of the multiplication table? I don't know where he got that from. That's not the definition of multiplication at all. Like it sounds good because he's rambling and you're probably half-assed listening. But if you think about what he said for two seconds, you'll remember that negative numbers exist and decimals exist. Both things that make numbers smaller. And if you still think I'm hating on little Terry, look at the paper he wrote for his thesis and you'll see in two seconds that it's batshit crazy. First and foremost, let's ask the most obvious question. Is this a finished equation? Yes. The answer is no. F Let's start our forensic audit there. It's an incomplete equation. No, it's not. Why? Because it's not even on both sides. It is, it is though. It 100% is though. Yes, nature desires action but demands equilibrium. See, that's one of those things that if you're like a little buzz and you're half-assed listening, that sounds smart. Nature moves, equilibrium, that sounds like some science. But if you think about it for two seconds, like honestly, what does that mean? Nature desires movement? Rocks are nature as shit, they, they don't move. And also, we are talking about math. Why are you talking about rivers and seas? They are not the same. <laughs> Therefore, in order for an equation to be finished slash complete, both sides of the equation must be equally balanced. Yet in the case of one times one, we have an unfinished equation. I promise you we don't. Because we have two ones on one side of the equation and one one on the other side of the equation. That's your logic for why every single person who's ever done math is wrong and you're right. We have two, two numbers, numbers on, on one side, side, side and, and one, one number, number on, on the other, other side. side. That's, that's, that's not the same. same. That's just how math works, dumbass. You know what the saddest part of this is? I've had three people in my family tell me that Terrence Howard is a genius. Three! And those are just the three that I talked to him about. Who knows how many more think this moron is smart? Two numbers on one side and one on the other. You should go to prison for just saying that out loud. All right, shut up now. Now, as I've been making this video, this man, Terrence Howard, had the nerve to have another appearance on Joe Rogan's show, this time with mathematician Eric Weinstein. And tell me why, when Eric confronts him on his one times one bullshit, little Terry cucks out and says it was a metaphor the entire time. When I say one times one equals two, that's a metaphor for challenging the status quo. Really, this is your guy, a metaphor, one that he's written papers about, has talked about all over the world and has never referred to as a metaphor. But now that he has this mathematician challenging him on this nonsense, all of a sudden, he was just being artistic. Jail. And we've got Joe Rogan over here with the biggest adult audience in the world, looking at Terry like he's Dr. Manhattan, like, wow, daddy science, please tell me more. You're so smart. Your explanation of these things and your description of the very nature of reality itself is not something that should be taken lightly. No. What is 
wrong with you? Isn't Joe Rogan the guy who like reads scientist books before they come on his podcast? You could have looked up anything on Terrence Howard. Any, there's so much out there. And you should have realized that he is a dumbass. No, Terrence is a genius, bro. You need to pray for Aubrey. Mental illness should be treated in private. It should not be amplified and glorified in front of tens of millions of people. That is unacceptable. And Joe, you should be banned from America for three months minimum for the way you handle that podcast alone, okay? But I'm dictator, that is what I would do to you, just so you know, so start preparing. Now to all the Rogan fans out there, I will say Joe did a much better job holding little Terrence's feet to the fire in the second interview, but also I don't care. It's still three months, have fun in another country. But I apologize, I'm getting ahead of myself because daddy science has even more to teach us because according to him, him, the only reason we have this janky ass math that's responsible for all human innovation is because of the Anunnaki sky people. He wrote this in his thesis. These are the things that he's sending to people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, expecting them to take it seriously. This man is saying that we have fake math because of the sky people. Prison. Some call them the Anunnaki the sky people. Whomever they were, they gave that naive generation some 6,000 years ago a multiplication table and a flat view of the universal geometry ul. They gave that poor misguided people a false axiom upon which to build their world. A false axiom that would behave almost as a bumper for our infantile-like species. I can hear his fans in the comments now. Okay, Kamal, well, maybe the math isn't right, but what about the shapes? Terrence Howard invented shapes. Dumbass. So like I said earlier, Terrence has convinced himself that he has invented a new shape. And according to this Rolling Stone article, he spends 17 hours a day putting these little plastic models together so he can use them to save the world. Now we have invented a new form of flight that I would like to bring here to Uganda to replace the drones, to replace the helicopters, to replace the planes. We've already, we have all the funding necessary. What we need is just a fertile ground in which to build this. Now this is the geometry of hydrogen. Of? Of hydrogen. Hydrogen. This is the proton itself. Mm. So any bond that hydrogen can make, our linchpins are able to make. So we're talking about unlimited bonding, unlimited predictable structures, supersymmetry. The linchpins are now able to behave as a swarm, as a colony that can defend the nation. This man just told the entire country of Uganda with a straight face that he has created alien technology drones that can combine with each other like Voltron and will single-handedly send their country into the future like it's vibranium in Wakanda. Jail. This is what happens when we have a culture that worships celebrities. Just because you can pretend to be other people or sing and dance does not mean you are a scientist. It doesn't necessarily mean you aren't a scientist or can't be a scientist, but it definitely does not mean you are a scientist. If anything, it means you're probably not one. And for the record, this is the ultimate power that little Terry is talking about. Unlimited bonding, supersymmetry, supersymmetry. You can pay someone $7 to make that on Fiverr right now. To be fair to Terrence here, he has put in some groundwork to make these linchpins in real life. He even created a contest with a $25,000 grand prize for whoever can make the best linchpins. But unfortunately, they all just kind of look like this. You know, they're like kind of cool looking, but it's basically just a shittier, slower version of something that's existed for years. And if I'm being honest, it would be really cool if Terrence just said he was working on finding a new way of flight. But you lose me and anyone who isn't batshit crazy when you say you're gonna take these shapes to create planets and save the universe. But luckily for all of us, Terrence's science genius doesn't just stop here. Because we're all about to witness how Terrence Howard creates planets and we rebuilt the planet Saturn without gravity. It has the rings and the hexagon 
that's observed at the mm. very top of it, without dark matter, without dark energy, without gravity, showing that it's an outward, inward, outward force pushing down that creates the planet. It Internal fission reaction in a nuclear in a planet with magnetic fields from iron cores, etc. Oh yeah, this is again just something Terry paid someone to make in an animation software. I know earlier he said that this is the same software Princeton uses. We use the same simulator that they use at Princeton. That's a lie, unless he's talking about like their filmmaking department or something, because this is Blender, it's just an animation software. Everything on screen right now, also made in Blender. And also not real. You can't make the claim that every single person on this planet is doing math and science wrong with your proof being two shitty animated videos. That's just as batshit crazy as me telling my family I'm stopping everything to become a crime fighter because I watch Berlizzi play Arkham Asylum on YouTube. Becoming a crime fighter would be stupid, but you know what's not stupid? Smelling good. That's why I'm so grateful to say that today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird is a subscription service that sends you new fragrances every single month. Now I'm not someone who's super aware of everything that's going on in the world of fragrance. So for my first month, I got three colognes that were pretty different, but were all still something I could actually see myself using. So I chose Arabian's Tonka from Montel Paris, probably said that wrong, Ride from Yellowstone and Ember from Jason Abood. And yes, I did look up how to say his last name properly. Each one comes in a bottle like this, and once you open it up, you can see they actually do give you a pretty decent amount in there. Another thing I really appreciate about this service is that each fragrance you get is gonna come with this little card that gives you a great description of the fragrance, the key scents of the Kelowna perfume, and even where to buy it. Now to give a quick review of the three that I got, Ember is gonna be like your typical cologne, you know, you got a first date, it's, it's safe. The Arabian Tonka is definitely a more unique smell. That's gonna be the one people are probably gonna ask you about it because I've never had a cologne that smells like that. It smells really good, it's just different. And Ride by Yellowstone is definitely my personal favorite. It's a good mix of things like sage, tobacco, vanilla, and smoked whiskey because I'm an alpha male. This really is a great service for anyone who's interested in fragrances and wants the ability to try different things. Their website has over 800 fragrances to choose from and whether you wanna go the Gucci or Christian Dior route or maybe more of an indie route, they have you covered. So if you wanna get 55% off your first order, use the code Kamal at checkout or click the first link in the description and begin to level up your fragrance game because I guarantee you the ladies will appreciate it. Now let's get back to the world's smartest man. And of course we can't forget about Walter Russell and the University of Science and Philosophy since those were such huge influences on Terence's scientific mind. And so I got in touch with the University of Science and Philosophy after watching some stuff about Walter Russell. I'm gonna play a video from their own website and you tell me if you think these are the greatest innovators of our generation or a bunch of sad losers that got tricked into being part of a fake science cult. We know that such a supreme effort starts in the heart and soul of every individual on earth. What are we talking about? Is the true currency of every cosmic man and woman. Is this nigga serious? See? Told you, like, oh, the University of Philosophy and Science, that sounds so smart. And then you go on their website and you're like, oh, this is where the sad people go. And for Terrence's slower fans in the back, the University of Science and Philosophy is not a real college or university. It's just where a defeated person's little remaining self-respect goes to die. So yeah, Terrence is not a science genius, but he might just be a pathological liar, and like a really bad one too. According to Terrence, he would have got his bachelor's from Pratt University, but two years in, he quit because he got into an argument with his teacher about, I'm sure you know, yeah, one times one equaling two. At least he's consistent, you know? <laughs> Consistently stupid, but consistent nonetheless. Terrence also said he got his PhD in chemical engineering from South Carolina University. What school did you go to? Well, I went to South Carolina State University and they gave me my doctorate in uh, applied materials and chemical engineering. The only issue with that is that they don't offer a graduate program for chemical engineering. So again, for the slow fans in the back, that means he's lying. 
Honestly, I don't think he went to Pratt either. I can't prove it, but I just don't think so. <laughs> and again, this is a terrible lie because how are you gonna claim to have your doctorate when you admit that you don't even have your bachelor's? Another fun lie Terrence likes to tell is the story about how when he was a teenager, he was diagnosed with Bell's palsy, which totally paralyzed the right side of his face. And according to him, doctors said that he had a 5% chance of ever being normal again. So of course, Terrence did what any anime protagonist would do. He started electrocuting himself in the face. He says he cut the wires out of his dad's electric razor, attached it to a fuse box in the basement, and started jamming the loose wires into his face. I did that every day for five months, and then I felt the slightest little twitch inside. Pause. But my personal favorite lies when Terrence told Joe Rogan with a straight face that he remembers his own birth, circumcision, and has been conscious since he was six months old in the womb. My first memory was almost like when you're dreaming and you're falling and you hit the bottom and you wake up. Mm -hmm. That was my first memory, but I didn't wake up here. I was inside my mother's womb. Now something's moving in front of you. And you're like, oh, that's my friend. But I had a different name for it. I didn't know it was my hand. But I knew I had a title for it. I remember being born, I remember being circumcised, I remember the whole nine. Again, this should go without saying, but that's physically impossible. The human brain isn't even close to being developed enough to start gaining memories when you're that young, so. He's just lying again. And even if Terrence Howard happens to be the only person in recorded history to have this kind of super brain, how would you know to focus and remember everything when you have no concept of memory or even existing? That doesn't make any sense. It's not like he understands like, oh shit, I woke up six months into the womb. Let me try to remember this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity that I could talk about in Joe Rogan. Like you're just a baby. You have no concept of anything. And how would you think to name your hand when you've never even heard words spoken before? Not only does little Terry frequently lie about his past, but he loves to make a claim that is batshit crazy and then prove that claim with something that is totally unrelated. For example, this is Terrence's way of proving that he remembers his own birth. And the proof of it was when my wife Mira that you just met, when she was six months pregnant with my son, Kieran, I wanted to prove to her what I was talking about. So I put a light on her stomach every day at six o'clock at night. And I would move that light back and forth and I put a song on for a week straight. On Saturday, after a week, I didn't put the light there and I didn't do the music. And he pushed up on her stomach. How does this prove anything? This literally has nothing to do with the story you just told. I mean, you're both babies, but that's about it. And he does this all the time, like saying that this shape proves that the square root of two is one. This is the proof yeah. that the square root of two is a rational number. It doesn't though. Or his proof that he's a science genius and everybody else is wrong is that he has a bunch of patents. If you're right, so many people are wrong. Everyone's wrong. Oh, well, the universe, the universe backs me up. And I have the proof of it. You, you have all these physicists that saying something different, but none of them have 97 patents. The patent to using a washer for an earring, that's what's proving that, that all physicists don't know what they're talking about. He does realize that anybody can get a patent, right? And that this doesn't mean anything. Does he, does he, know, does he know that? Or is he just hoping Joe does it? That's the question I need answers to. This man is so smug, but find me one person on this planet that has ever benefited from any of his inventions, okay? Because Terry has been talking that dumb shit for like 10 years now. So where are all these people who are living in paradise because of Terryology? We're all alive right now because scientists, engineers, and everyone who makes shit realizes that one times one will always equal one. If they listen to Terrence's dumbass, we would all be dead. And for the record, if someone invented something and it's their name, Ology, it's not real. But, 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 but Kamal, what about his VR patent? It would have made him seven trillion dollars if those lawyers weren't there to shake him down. All VR technology is based off of Terrence Howard genius. No. Here is what actually happened. It is true that Terrence Howard applied for a patent that was related to VR and AR, but he abandoned it before it could go through the entire process. Patents need to be looked over and audited by professionals. This is a process that can take years and years. Terrence's patent got approved for nothing. If you look at the patent, 
These companies have all earned, they have multi-billion dollar companies they've built off of my patents. Just roll like through. Sony, Microsoft, Amazon. Hewlett Packard. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This IBM, and it's still <laughs> making money. This patent has earned over $7 trillion. Yeah, all of that was just wrong. Just because a company cites your patent application, it doesn't mean they took anything from your application. It doesn't even mean that they agree with anything that's in your application. The only thing that those sightings actually mean is that those companies looked at Terrence Howard's patent application. That's it. So when it comes to Terrence Howard acting like all VR technology stems from his genius patent, he's either lying or has no idea what he's talking about, which was basically that entire three hour podcast. And seven trillion dollars honestly i don't know how he came up with that number i'm assuming he just took the value of all the companies that were on that list and added them together but hopefully i don't have to explain how stupid and arrogant it is to try to take credit for the entire success of a company just because they looked at your patent application especially when those companies have been successful decades before terrence even knew what a patent was and that even if the patent went through there is zero evidence evidence that these companies would owe him a dollar. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. People like Terry here have always fascinated me, like how you have the balls to go on the biggest podcast in the world and just spew very fact checkable bullshit for three hours straight is insane to me. And like I said, this man has just been pretending to be a scientist for a decade now. So I'm sitting here thinking, right, like what compels somebody to constantly make a fool of themselves over and over and over again, you know what I mean? Because it's not like Terrence Howard is just that guy who's too old to be working at Arby's. He's a nominated actor, but every day he makes the conscious decision to take the L. I just don't get it. So I came up with a theory. And for the record, I have no books. I have no data. I'm just a guy shooting from the hip, okay? Me and you were just two old broads talking shit. So here's my theory. Terrence Howard played Rhodey in Iron Man 1 and was actually the highest paid actor on the entire set. I think he got like six times more money than Robert Downey Jr. got. But rumor has it, John Favreau, the director of Iron Man 1, hated Terrence's performance. He apparently hated it so much he had to cut around it when he was editing the movie. So when it was time to shoot Iron Man 2, instead of giving Terrence the eight million dollars he was supposed to get in his contract marvel decided to cut roadie's role significantly and only offered terrence a measly one million dollars terrence and his team declined next thing we know don Cheadle is war machine now missing out on one acting opportunity doesn't sound like the biggest deal in the world especially when you're already famous but don Cheadle made about 50 million dollars from that war machine role let alone all the other opportunities that it gave him but for Terrence, on the other hand, getting replaced kind of blacklisted him in Hollywood. It was rumored that Terrence was super difficult on set, and when one of the hottest directors in Hollywood is saying you did a shitty job, you know, it's not a good look. And after everything went down, it's also rumored that Terrence's acting fee went from three to four million to 40,000 almost immediately. So my theory is instead of Terrence Howard accepting his loss and taking accountability for his shitty behavior, this man said, if I can't be Iron Man on the screen, I'm going to be Iron Man in real life. And has been trying to convince himself and the world that he is a science god that got all of his alien knowledge from portals and shit. Tell me this isn't just an obnoxious egomaniac who can't take accountability. Tell me that's not what this is. Tell me. You know that's a genius theory. I have nothing to back it up, but tell me I'm wrong. You can't. As far as me harming somebody, anybody that knows me, I, I really can't harm a fly. See, when you combine a loss of opportunity like that with a up childhood, everything starts to make sense. See, Terrence Howard was born to a 15-year-old mother and abusive father and was raised in the godforsaken Cleveland, Ohio. So it's safe to say that his childhood was ass. But unfortunately, growing up in dog shit Cleveland, Ohio was not the worst of it for Terrence because when this man was only a toddler, he witnessed his father stab a man to death while in line to go see Santa Claus. This really happened. 
In 1971, when Terrence was only two years old, he went to go see Santa Claus with his dad, his pregnant mom, and his three other siblings. At some point, the Howard family is accused of cutting by some other people in line, and a fight breaks out between Tyrone Howard, Terrence's dad, and a man named Jack Fitzpatrick, who apparently taught people how to be priests, which is totally insane. According to witnesses, Jack had Terrence's dad pinned against the wall and kneed him in the groin, which caused Tyrone to take a sharp object out of his pocket, stabbing Jack in the leg and in the neck which eventually did kill him. Tyrone then fled the scene taking his family to his mom's house before turning himself in a few hours later. Now according to my reality TV research when you have parents that are batshit crazy you have two options. You can either use them as an example of what not to be or become exactly like them. Guess which route Terrence chose? Yeah the bad one yeah good guess. See, Terrence has a very long history of being a violent psychopath. Let's go through a brief rundown of his history so you can know what I'm talking about. In the year 2000, Terrence was arrested for assaulting a flight attendant who had asked him to sit back in his seat. What a bitch, I know. Less than a year after that, Terrence was arrested for allegedly breaking down his wife's door, dragging her to the backyard, and punching her in the face twice. A little while after that, he was charged with punching a woman in the face at a restaurant. Not his wife this time, don't worry, just a random woman. Now I'm sure you're asking, Kamal, what could make a famous actor punch a random woman in the face in the middle of a restaurant? Well, Terrence thought that she got sat before him, so... I mean, she kind of had that one coming, to be fair. In 2010, less than seven days after marrying his second wife, she accused Terrence of trying to throw her off of a balcony and again, punching her in the face. In 2012, his girlfriend, Mei Seng Yang, accused him of attacking her in his house and even filed a civil suit against him. And in 2013, Terrence was accused of strangling his ex-wife in Costa Rica and again, punching her in the face. Being accused of domestic violence, all of those things, and I thought it was a curse at the time, but it was really removing me from advancing down the wrong path. Yeah, not the greatest guy to ever live. For 40 years, I was told I was wrong. Deep down, I understand the sentiment that the Terrence fans have. It would be amazing if an actor figured out how to tweak math and could single-handedly send us into the future. And one day, maybe that'll happen. But it's never going to be from someone like Terrence Howard because Terrence isn't looking for the truth. He's looking for little bullshit gotchas that will make him appear smart to people who don't know anything about math or science, which unfortunately is almost all of us. That's why when his theories have been critiqued by people who actually know what they're talking about, he either pouts like a child, pretends that he can't hear them. Uh, you said that a dollar times a dollar is two dollars? Huh? When you multiply those two things together, you get a pound squared. A pound squared, yeah. That the unit gets squared as well. One squared. Say that again. We use the mic. Or lies and says that it was just a metaphor the entire time. When I say one times one equals two, that's a metaphor for challenging the status quo. But Terrence isn't the only one that does stuff like this because we're all guilty of holding on to a belief because we're too emotionally attached to see the truth. The biggest difference is one, the lies we tell ourselves aren't as obnoxious. And two, we're not super famous so we can't go on Joe Rogan and look stupid. And three, we don't give women black eyes. Unless they deserve it. I'm sorry. So I challenge everyone watching to be better than Terrence and continue to challenge and question your own beliefs and to own your bullshit, at least privately, so that one day you're not on stage lying to the entire country of Uganda about the unlimited power of your anime drone. Speaking of Terrence's unlimited power, I wanted to announce that we have created an official Terrence the Tesseract Howard t-shirt and hoodie to properly commemorate this beautiful moment in internet history. I wanted this design to be as realistic as possible, so we've equipped him with ultimate anime Voltron power obviously. Also on the site right now, we have three other designs that I'm really, really proud of. I really had zero interest in going with the typical YouTube merch route and just putting my face or a stupid saying on an overpriced hoodie. Everything on the side is a standalone design that's connected to the channel in one way or another. So it would mean the world to me if you guys would go to Kamal.com or the second link in the description, check out the designs and let me know what you think. Once the new designs are out, everything's going to be wiped from the site. So, you know, time is of the essence. Obviously, you guys don't owe me anything 
and just making it this far into the video really does mean a lot. But if you guys want to show support, that is the best way to do it. Appreciate you. All right, you made it to the end of the video. Let it be known that I appreciate you more than most people in my family. Now, if you like this video where I make fun of an obnoxious narcissist, I can guarantee you you'll appreciate this next video even more.